everyone, welcome to the channel. This is Big Daddy Dave, and this is a map tour of a new map to Farming Simulator 22 called Eddingham Park. Let's go ahead and strap in for this adventure, because this is going to be a good map. I can already tell you right from the beginning. So let's go ahead and start out by looking at the map itself. <clears throat> While we look at the map, I'm going to go ahead and read the description. Eddingham Park. As a newcomer to agriculture and to the area, you've got a job at the local BGA, which luckily has some equipment that you can use, but it comes at a price. Can you be successful and work your way up to one of the available farms in the area or even build your own? The choice is yours. Terrain height and field sizes correspond to real life. Real map PDA. Precision farming ready with realistic soil map. Removable hedge collisions. Trigger in the store. That will be explained later. 47 fields. Two forestry areas. Water sources at river crossings. Productions and cell points included in the map. Custom seasonal growth plan with cotton and sugar cane removed. Most things only work once the land has been bought, animals, silos, etc. Malthouse Farms includes horses and pigs. Brompton Farmhouse includes chickens and cows. Crossfield Dairy includes cows and sheep. And Atcham Fishing Club is an hourly income when buying the land. Have fun. This has been created by the maker GB Modding. The file size is 509.23 megabytes to download and is available on all platforms. So you can see we start up here in the northwest of the map. This is a mod map based on real life. You can see the kind of Google image uh, laid out behind the animated image for the PDA. If we scroll through some of these, uh, like the crop calendars, as earlier mentioned in description, we can see how the sugar cane and cotton have actually been removed. So if you're playing with seasons, you are not going to be able to plant these crops. Let's see. Here's your animals section. These are the ones that you own right away. Now, this comes with a little bit of caveat. You'll see that you have cows here. Ignore this for now. We'll go over this in more detail later. There is contracts available on this map. And you start with a production chain, the biogas plant. Now, let's go ahead and just tweak a couple settings just real fast. And there we go. Let's go ahead and get started. As mentioned before, we start up in the northwest corner of the map here at the hotel. You do start with a sleep trigger here at the hotel. As mentioned in the description, you're freshly in, new into town, so you're staying here at the hotel on new farmer mode. This is your sleep trigger, this little doormat. Click on it and fast forward time. Now we're going to start out this little mod uh, tour, or I'm sorry, map tour. Uh, on foot. We're going to go on foot for just a second. So out behind here, Oh, and that's something else that reminds me. Uh, there are no collectibles on this map. Uh, how you can tell if there's collectibles or not, you come to the statistics screen down here in the right-hand column. Uh, somewhere in the ballpark of time played and AI workers hired, you'll see a category for collectibles. If they exist, they do not on this map. Now, this is our first cell point. This is the hotel cell point. One thing you'll see on this map is there's multiple cell points right next to each other. My best guess is with a potato box here, this is where you're going to sell your potatoes. and They're going to get stored on the outside of this uh, particular cell point. Not, probably most likely not visually, but you will uh, kind of be able to role play that they're being stored outside of the hotel and everything else that the hotel takes at this particular si uh, cell point will go inside. Moving along, we're going to head down the street. We're going to head to the garage where we can buy our equipment. So right down here, you'll see the John Deere dealership, Hunt Forest Group. Go inside. 
right here is your uh, shop menu and as said in the description earlier you're able to remove hedges uh, hedge collisions here is the button to do that it's B for consoles and I believe it's circle for PlayStation so you click that you'll hear a noise you can turn them on and off as you desire if we come around back you'll see this is the spawn point for your uh, equipment that you purchase or lease around the side here we can open this door and this is our repair trigger right here we can open both doors and use that as we see fit here is a buy point for various grains and uh, crops that are available uh, things like wheat if you come to your uh, prices menu you can see down at the bottom where it says purchase point that's this area here uh, and you can see under the selling section those are the items that get sold to you now one thing I'm going to do real fast before moving on is I'm going to add some money to uh, to the game because there's going to be a lot of purchase points that I'm going to need to go ahead and purchase to complete this map tour Okay. now we're going to come to our first production point you can see here this is the urban sheep clothing we can purchase for eighty thousand dollars we go ahead and purchase that and we click into it you can see here we can take uh, cotton uh, I'm sorry wool cotton and more wool to make fabric and clothes and you'll notice that these are a little bit different uh, this particular clothing shop because where it's kind of a combination a hybrid if you will of the spinnery and the clothing uh, production points uh, but on this map as mentioned before you can grow cotton if you're on uh, see if you're playing on seasons and because you can't uh, grow cotton unless you got a mod uh, third-party mod like Omatana's uh, open gardens where you can grow the uh, grow the grow the cotton itself and and put it into pallets uh, you're not going to be able to actually uh, use cotton with seasons so I personally don't see this being too much of a thing unless you're playing without it um, and also, personally, I don't think uh, fabric is really kind of a big deal in this uh, particular production. Yeah, you could, uh, you know, kind of split it to, to up your production amount. But if you come to your prices menu and you scroll down your fabric and clothes, currently fabric is selling for 4756 with a high point of almost $7,000. Clothing, on the other hand, high point of almost $18.5. 5k you're talking a pretty big difference so yeah it might be a little bit slower uh, to produce the clothes uh, instead of 1440 uh, cycles you're getting 1080 and you're using just two more liters of wool I'm sorry uh, yeah of wool uh, per cycle but in the end you're getting almost three times the value three times the amount so personally don't see that uh, fabric being too big of a thing if we come into the door over here you see this is where our pallets will spawn this little area here come over to the side we can open we can open aha there we go headstand off to the side we can open the garage door here and we can input our uh, products into this dump point here now moving on we're gonna head back towards nope this way head back towards the hotel and I'm gonna skip time just to add in some of that money that I was mentioning earlier we're just gonna go ahead and go one hour that should be should be more than enough nine o'clock yeah five million dollars that should be more than enough perfect so we're going to backtrack out to the parking lot here where our truck is here. And you can see our truck, whew, we came in, we're new to town, and we are on fumes. So we're going to have to address that pretty quick. But first things first, we're going to make a right out of the parking lot and 
head down this uh, laneway down to the end of it and we're going to come to our first uh, farm that was mentioned on the map. This farm, Malt House Farms. Let's go ahead and open the gates. Let's go back to the map real fast because we got to purchase this area. Now, where did we start? We started up here at the hotel. We came out back to the hotel cell point. Came out to the main road, over to the shop. Out back, we checked out the purchase point, went to the urban sheep, went back to the hotel, and then down this main laneway to where we're here now at Mall House Farms. So let's go ahead and purchase the farm here for $456,870. Now, before you didn't see anything, but now after we purchased it, we have horses, we have pigs, a vehicle workshop, a petrol tank, gas tank for us Americans, and a silo. We also own fields 3 and 12, and what looks to be maybe a little strip of forestry down here at the uh, riverside. Now, we're going to bring the truck in. Off to our right hand side is where the horse pen is. Now if you do if you come in here and you do not purchase the land first, these garages, these doorways and entryways, you can't open them. To gain access to them, you have to purchase the land. So if we open them now, you can see we can have access to it, and this is where we can feed our horses. Now One thing I will say is the detail on this map is just crazy. Just absolutely insane. GB modding, or I'm sorry, sorry, GB gaming did an amazing job to make this look so good. All these custom sheds, uh, custom barns, just they put a lot of a lot of effort into this. And that reminds me, one thing we didn't look through was some of the additional mods and stuff they kind of put into the background. So if we go into our build menu, here in the buildings and sheds, you scroll over to the right here, you'll see all these different mods and uh, buildings that they place down here. Just tons and tons of various sheds and buildings. Let's see, there was a manure heap with 360 rotation. If you see down here, there is a, a bunker silo or manure heaps uh, like this one here. Same exact ones we had before, but the, the base game manure heap only snaps in 90 degree increments. But this new one on this map is 360 degrees. Very nice. I don't believe there's anything under, oops, nothing under silo extensions. Uh, there was a mod for the petrol tanks, the gas tanks here on containers. Under tools, nothing that was added in and farmhouse we do have the uh, mat, um, floor mat. Uh, there are no factories, no cell points, no greenhouses, no additional I should be saying, no additional orchards and no additional generators. These are government subsidies mod pack that uh, I added in to be able to port in some extra money. Under animals, and this will become relevant here in a second, um, there are no additional uh, mods that the map maker put in. Um, and you'll see why this is kind of important here in just one second. Uh, nothing under the decorations for fences, lights, and others. And then last tab to look at is here under painting we do have several uh, several paint schemes that the map maker put in uh, that are not part of the base game. Now the reason I was mentioning that it's important to uh, note that you do not have animal pens is you see all these various animal pens, the barns, if you click with your right thumbstick down on it you can sell everything on these farms every single farm oh, I mean I should say just about everything is sellable including the horse pasture and the paddocks the fencing 
um, pretty much everything is sellable. But you sell these horse paddocks or the pig, uh, pig barn over here. They didn't add those in to put them back. So if you take them out, you're not putting those ones back in. So a little word of warning. Now, as we kind of wander around the farm here, you'll see tons and tons of storage. I can't believe just how much storage there is at this particular farm. Over here is our repair trigger here on the farm and a wardrobe trigger. Some more storage, barn space. Just cavernous. We'll be able to store tons and tons of equipment. Now over here is the pig pasture, pig barn. We'll go ahead and put in let's say, 10 little piggies. We come here under animals. Again, ignoring the cows for now. Those will become relevant later. Everything is, you know, base game ready, you know, as to be expected. Pig food or the various uh, combination of grains and proteins, base food, root crops uh, for the pigs. Looks like water is handled by the barn itself, so you don't have to worry about that. And outside here is the slurry pit. Come around back, we get some more decorative buildings and barn space. We got these bunks here. These are not like bunker silos where you can create uh, silage, but it looks more like places where you potentially park your vehicles or uh, separate out some uh, bulk uh, crops. Then you can just put on the floor and let them kind of sit. If we head back around here and see straight ahead is the medium petrol tank, gas tank. In which case, you can actually click on the wrench here and have them deliver the diesel that you need for your vehicles. And we're going to go ahead and have them deliver, you know, the fuel because, as uh, mentioned in the description, we came in for fresh uh, in town. And we need to fill up our truck. Or else we're going to have a rather short uh, map reveal. Perfect. Over in the back here is the silo. It's just a standard grain silo, no uh, multi-fruit, anything along those lines. You can go ahead and open that barn door and you can see into the horse paddock itself. This is the trigger for your horses. You click on that, we'll go ahead and add a, add a horse. There's 14 horses that are uh, able to be in this paddock. Uh, again, base grains and whatnot if we go, whoops. If we go here, uh, just base food and hay, uh, pretty sure that's oats um, that you can give your horses as well as some hay. Uh, water is handled and then just normal base uh, horse behavior. More storage space, some storage just out back of the paddock, and just absolutely lovely. Like As I went around this map getting ready for this review, I, I just... I've never been to England, but, uh, but I have seen like various documentaries and television movies and it's just, it's like the TV shows and the, the movies and documentaries I've seen. It just, it looks so picturesque and so like, I don't know if there's a word for Americana for English, but very English kind of. Word. I'm sure it's not. Anyways, we're going ahead and leaving the farm and coming out to the main road here. Once we get to the end of the roadway, we're going to make a right. I've got to remember, this American wants to drive on the right side of the road, but we've got to stay on the left side. All the traffic will uh, prefer not to have a crash counter. And we're going to stop over here. For another uh, point of interest, this is a liquid silo. In this liquid silo, you can store fertilizer, herbicide, digesty, and slurry. Then we're gonna jet down this little path and head down to the end of it. Now I've actually uh, tried recording this uh, map tour a couple of times. Uh, and through various issues, 
one or another had to to re-record or or whatever a couple of times over so now i'm hopefully worked out all the bugs hopefully got everything all situated and uh in the meantime i was kind of watching some other map tours and whatnot and just so happened to notice somebody come back here i didn't even notice the first couple of times of recording this this was even back here now let's head to our map real quick because we have another purchase point where were we we were here at Mal nope here at malt house farms we came up this laneway to the main road down the road to this liquid silo and then we came down all the way to where we're at here which is if we purchase this land this little sliver a sheep pasture if we come back here and just dawned on me i don't know if i noticed or i don't know if i said how many pigs can be uh, purchased at the previous farmhouse it's 270. now we're here at the sheep pen this is a actual pen so you're going to have to put in food and water your wool point is here in the hash marks and you can have up to 75 sheep let's go ahead and purchase them just so we can kind of check them out roaming through the pen just it's all like obviously not free range but you know we got the fencing and the hedging to keep them in place but just so wide open so uh picturesque they're gonna be they're gonna be happy here a little uh storage area for your and uh probably a place for the sheep to get out of the rain now head back to the truck Fence. and then we'll turn back around and head up this laneway this this path little two track back to the main road Uh, oops, 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 oops. Crash counter plus one. As uh, mentioned before, these uh, hedges uh, do have collisions on them, so they'll act like a fence. Uh, you bump into them, you're going to come to a to a stop. Uh, again, they can be disabled there at the shop. There we go. Now we're back out to the main road. We we'll get out here. We're going to make a left, I'm sorry, left. Whew, right, to our next point of interest. We're just going to come up to the side of the road here and we're going to pull off. Oh, there's the gate. Okay. So we're off to the side of the road. Now, why am I stopping here? If we cross the road without getting ran over, whoops, you can open this gate. Come through here, and look at this expanse. Now I point this out because, as far as I'm aware, that gate is the only entryway to this back area. You notice it's rather small. But for those who are creative, if we go back to the map, we'll quickly take a look at where we were. We were here at the sheep pen. Came up the laneway, back out, and here we are. If we go to the purchasing map, we click that area that we're in now. Look at that. That's a bunch of land that includes the town that we were in before, more town area, the road network, the river, the whole nine yards. Perfect for if you want to put placeables for stories or whatever within the town. So you can go ahead and purchase that. And that gives you access to this metal. And this is all mobile grass. You should will come out here. If you get equipment small enough to be able to get through that gateway, which now in FS22, there are small tractors like the Antonio Carrera pack. There's the uh, small fence and uh, all the other things for grape harvesting, olive harvesting that we can use to squeeze through here and we can mow all this grass now if you've got a way to pick it up and move it to the other side of the fence this is tons and tons of grass now again 
you're an employee at the BGA. Now that's going to become more relevant later on, but we can uh, feed all this into our, our fermenter, make digestates, power, methane, and we'll be kind of rolling on the hog just from this land here that doesn't cost us a thing. Now, there is other areas of the map that can be purchased. We scroll down the very bottom here and we click down here. This is a stark contrast to what we were just looking at. Zero dollars was the previous uh, for that kind of uh, inner perimeter, the roadway network kind of thing. This outer perimeter is $158,955,000 to buy. Now, unless you're a completionist, somebody who wants to purchase every single field, forest, square inch of this map, then this $158,000 is going to be a complete waste of money and time because this area you cannot get into. You can't do like what you did here and go through a, a gate or whatever and gain access to this area down here out in the western side the eastern side you don't have access to it so there's really no point unless you're just trying to do a completionist angle now we'll hop back in the truck we'll head down the street and go back to the left side of the road because again this is supposed to be england and we're coming up to our next uh production chain we hop out of the truck, open the gate. This is Mr. Split's furniture. Apparently they got something. If we open the door here. Now this is a furniture shop. If we click on the wrench, we can purchase Mr. Split's for $60,000. We'll go ahead and purchase it. And if you supply them with wood or planks, you're as your input, your output will be furniture and wood chips. You can open this door here. This is your trigger to sell any lumber and wood. And this is your input for the planks. Your output will be furniture pallets right here. Now, back to the truck. Back up just slightly and pull on out. We'll continue heading east. And then we'll come down here for our next point of interest. This down here is a production chain as well as a sell point. So first we're going to check out the sell point, the sweet potato. And again, two distinct drop off points, dump points. Again, I think this side's for potatoes, this side's for pretty much anything else that they'll accept at the sweet potato. Over here is our production point. This is the old water mill. You can purchase it for $96,000. Again, we're going to go ahead and purchase it. And you can see this is our grain mill, but it's also something else. So standard wheat, barley, oats, sorghum. But look at that. It's also our oil mill. We can put in our sunflower, canola, and olives, and we'll get the oils for those corresponding uh, products. Pallets will produce out here, our input here. Let's spin it around. We'll head out. And now this is where we're going to have to do a bit of backtracking. Conscious of the time, I want to oh, watch out for dash. Oh dear. Whew. Crash counter plus one. Don't want to run over 
pedestrians. So anyways, continuing to head west now. I'm conscious of time. I want to keep my map tours to under an hour unless there's something very specific that, you know, the map is so huge, so many tricks and things that need to be gone through. Now, I just want to stop here just real fast. I know I said I'm conscious of time, but look at that. Beautiful walking bridge overlooking the river. Just just absolutely gorgeous. They did such a good job with this map. Just all these little touches and and uh, features that are on this map very 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 cool now we're quickly approaching our next point of interest continue driving down here And here is our next point of interest. This, pull off to the side, is Atcham Fishing Club. Now check this out. Looks like just a campground. You know? Now, if you look on the map, and actually, where have we been so far? We were up here at Mr. Splits, headed east and took in the old water mill as well as sweet potato. We went back north to the main stretch and drove all the way out west past the hotel where we started and headed down this main street. Now you can see here there's an exclamation point. Normally this denotes uh, when you accept a contract like a harvesting contract and as a delivery point. This is just a kind of get your attention point. The reason that is is that if we click on the purchase and we purchase this land for 36,360 this now this plot of land now turns into a money generator. Uh, it'll start generating income hourly and give it to us as we need it. But just check out how picturesque this is. You know, fishing club out here on the dock, you can be fishing. There would be some awesome role-playing that you could do here. Um, because we have that uh, f doormat uh, that's loaded in base into this map, we could potentially purchase the land, put down a, a floor mat, and we can pretend to be camping. This is where we're staying temporarily, kind of thing. Whatever the case may be. Right, hop back in the truck, and we're going to jet on down. Continuing south on this roadway. So here on our right, this is the Atchum Livestock Sale. This is the animal dealer. And check it out, animated cows. There's only one other map I'm aware of off the top of my head where they actually have animated cows at the dealership. Now, remember me telling you earlier about the cow barn? That's this here, Animal Dealer Cows. But because they're animated, they're actually built into the map, it's technically a pen that you own sort of thing, but you have no way of putting in water, milk, feed, nothing. So you don't really have to worry about it. And you can see over on the right side, 99 million liters of water, 99 million liters of food. These cows will be fine for many, many, many in-game years to come. Up ahead is our purchasing point for the dialogue box for animals. Off to the right side here is the... Uh, just looking over my notes. Atchum Livestock Bales sell point. Then off to the side here is the purchasing of manure and slurry. So this is a good place for you to be able to purchase uh, slurry manure if you need them. Let's go ahead and hop back in. 
from here, we are going to go straight across and down this laneway. And coming up next is going to be the plots of land that we start out with right at the very, very beginning of the map. These are areas we own and it kind of goes into the role playing that the map maker created in the description. And I'll kind of explain more about what they were talking about with the equipment that you have for you that comes at a price. Now, if we come to this fork in the road and make a left after the fork. If you look off to the left here, all this little grass field off to our left, we own that, field 35. We start out with that. Now, I also want to point this out. This is just a cool little detail. This stone wall here looks like somebody came through with their uh, harvester or whatever and they just ran and bashed right into the wall just cool little details just things like that that just kind of get you to be immersed just that little extra layer deeper into the map and such a cool little addition that they put in now here we have the biogas plant this is where according to the description where you have a job and here's your equipment. Now let's uh, open up our vehicles menu and check our own items. Oh, look at that. We only own our pickup truck. That's weird. It says that we have access to all these equipment. You know, the mowers, the windrower, the forge wagon, the tractor, this John Deere, and this uh, JCB telehandler. It says that we have this. Well, technically we do. It's because they're all leased. It's all equipment that's technically leased by you, but it's supposed to be, quote, owned by the BGA. You're just using it at your dime. <clears throat> at the BGA, we have a fair-sized bunker silo. So we're going to be, you know, doing a fair bit of grass work on this map to start, especially if we... Uh, you know, we start out with that grass field there, and if you purchase that $0, uh, you know, kind of perimeter up in the north, uh, this is a standard BGA, takes all your standard crops, silage, slurry, manure, sugar cut, uh, sugar beet cut. One other thing we have here at the BGA is another gas tank, another petrol tank. And again, you click the wrench, you can have it delivered, quote unquote delivered, or you can uh, load it in yourself if you have a tank. Truck. I'm gonna get turned around. Just cut through the side over here. And we're gonna head back out the driveway out of the BGA. And our next point of interest is our. S Whoa! Jeepers, creepers. See, again, that little detail of from the person who crashed into that. Uh, crashed into that fence, they tore up the roadway a bit. And that's pretty much what I hit. Now this is our second farm that we came or that we come across. This is Brompton Farmhouse. Now let's take a look at the map and take a look where we've been up until this point. We were up here at the Atcham Fishing Club, came down south to the animal dealer. Uh, checked out the Atcham Livestock Bales and the Purchase Manure and Slurry Point. We then came out down this laneway, or drive, not driveway. Uh, yeah, I guess it is called a laneway. All the way up to here where the biogas plant, we checked out again our Field 35 and the land for the biogas. Also own this bit of forestry right behind the biogas that leads up to the river. So we could potentially do a little bit of forestry, make wood chips, or sell the lumber. Now we're going to go ahead and purchase uh, this plot of land here for $213,200. And now you see all these various triggers come up. We've got a large greenhouse. We've got, uh, oops, we got chickens. We've got a, another petrol or gas tank, and we have cows. 
So I'm going to go ahead and pull the truck up into the yard here. And again, just like the first farm, uh, all these doorways and whatnot are locked until you purchase the land. Uh, here's our gas tank. Here's our vehicle workshop here on this farm. And again, storage, tons of barn space, tons of storage, places to store equipment at every single farm. Here is our chicken pen, chicken coop, well, technically a pen. Uh, we can store 30 chickens. We'll go ahead and purchase 10 of them and kind of check them out in there. This is our feed point, and this is where our eggs will pop up. If we come around the side, again, more storage. We come up this little part of the drive, and we've got a large greenhouse. This is just a standard greenhouse. Uh, click on the wrench inside, and you can use water to convert into either strawberries, lettuce, or tomatoes. If we come back around to the other side of the farm and down this little path in the back, this is our ho uh, horse, cow barn. This cow barn can hold 200 cows. Let's go ahead and purchase 10 of them. This is our slurry point, milk point up here. This is our feeding point. And look at this, all this area back here for our cows to roam. So cool. And again, more grass, tons and tons of grass work to be done on this map. If you choose to, you can get back here. You can get some bigger equipment, you know, open the gates, get your mower, mow around your, your cows. And just go to town. We'll come back up this little sideway here. And our truck is just on the other side of this fence. Hop that. Hop in our truck. And we'll head out to our next point of interest. And we'll turn down this split. And come up here is our next sell point. This is Mrs. Holland's Village Shop. Here's our one sell point. And just like all the other sell points, there's two separate sell points. This looks like this will be like the place for potatoes. Um, similar to the hotel, similar to the uh, sweet potato. You know, you've got two separate sell points. That looks like one might just strictly be um, where the potatoes and stuff goes. And... Other one is where kind of everything else goes. And it might be potatoes and other root crops like sugar beets. Uh, not 100% certain about that, but that's the potential I'm thinking. And we're heading out, made a left down that drive, and we're heading down a long driveway because this is our third and final farm that we can purchase down at the end of this driveway. We're going to pull up ahead through this fence here, and then we'll hop out and backtrack. And I'll show you why here in a little bit. This is the Crossfields Dairy. We'll go ahead and show where we've been. We were up here at the Brompton Farmhouse. Came out down this little drive to Mrs. Holland's Village, Mrs. Holland's Village Shop. Came out. Down and long down this long driveway, and here we are at the Crossfields Dairy. If we click and purchase this land, uh, it is four hundred fifty-nine thousand four hundred sixty. One thing I forgot to mention is that when you purchase the Brompton Farm, you also purchase Fields Thirty-Four. Now let's go ahead and purchase Crossfields Dairy. Purchasing it will also give you fields 27, 26, and 25. And what do we get? We get another vehicle workshop, the cows, another diesel or, or gas tank, another uh, another silo, and all the way down here, we got sheep. We're going to walk around the farm, taking all the sites. 
Now again, tons and tons and tons of storage. Again, if we don't own this area, then we can't use these barns. They're locked off to us. You can see here is our vehicle workshop. Another wardrobe change. More storage. Come back around the corner and look at this. Just gorgeous kind of archway and architecture that they do here. This kind of pass through that they incorporated. We've got more storage around back. This is a field that's... Uh, purchase when you purchase this land coming around back here we've got a bunker silo where we can make more silage and then a just normal bunk where you can put your bulk goods or whatever uh, over here is our animal purchase point for cows we'll buy 10 more so we can see them in there over here is our milk trigger we've got our feed and uh, feed trigger Here's our silo. Again, base game crops, uh, our, our standard crops, not a multi-fruit, our slurry point, and our gas tank. Hop the fence here. Hey, here's some of our cows right here. Hop into a truck, and you can see straight ahead is the cow field. We head down this little pathway beyond the cows. here at the end is where the sheep are. It's this little sheep pen. And again, this is kind of another pen. This isn't, uh, you know, both of the sheeps require water because they're actually like pens. They're not, uh, you know, not, not like a barn where the barn supplies them with water. Uh, we click on, there it is. We can get 200 sheep here. And that reminds me, I didn't mention how many cows or chickens. Did I mention chickens at the last? So at the last farm at Brompton Farms you could have 30 chickens and 200 cows and here you can see we can have 200 sheep as well as 300 cows. And again we'll go ahead and purchase them just to see them roaming around out there. And again we've got more storage so if you want to keep some grass bales out here for your sheep. Got more additional storage here. Some overhead storage. Jump the fence. And now we're going to head back out. Oh, hey, cow on the road. Well, we're going to head out and back again down this long driveway. Very, very long driveway. Now we've got a little bit of a drive in front of us before we get to our next points of interest. And there's Mrs. Hollins on the left, Brompton Farm on the right. And we're going to make a follow path to the left here. And this is going to take us down to the southern town on the map. As I mentioned before, I am really liking the way that this map looks. Uh, really enjoying it. You are not going to get large bits of equipment. Uh, down these laneways uh, and paths uh, without it being really difficult. Now, having said all those positive things uh, previously, one thing, if I have to nitpick, and stop here and bring up the map and show where we've been so far, we're out here at the uh, Crossfield Dairy, uh, checking out this farm. We came back down this long driveway, past Mrs. Hollins, followed this around, and now we're out here. But you can see if you look on the map here, this is part of the, the one thing, the one issue that I have, quote unquote. If you follow the path down, you can kind of see the road network down here to the south. But our person's up here in the north. Coming through on a couple of the getting to know this before doing the map tour, this kind of threw me for a loop trying to figure out how to get to these various uh 
points, these productions and sell points, uh, just really couldn't uh, wrap my brain around it. My brain just did not want to function because it wasn't, you know, following the roadways. So had to kind of figure it out kind of thing. But very, very minor, not a huge, huge deal, just something that, that noticed. This is our next sell point. This is British grain. But what's weird, where's the sell point? It's back here. This is your unload point for British grains. I just, I absolutely love that the GB Gaming, the map creator, integrated this into this modified building like this just just works it just looks like it's supposed to be there like you're you're actually unloading into a business now we're gonna pull this truck up just a bit further we're gonna park it right here and we're gonna come up to our next sell point this is the lower cross indoor market Come around the back for our cell points. Again, multiple cell points. We've got a side for potatoes and a side for others. That this uh, particular cell point will take. We're going to do this part on foot because it's just a little bit easier with all the twists and turns. We come to our next production point. This is the Sunrise Bakery. You can purchase it for $125,000, which we're going to do. Now, most bakeries, like base game bakeries, you can do breads and you can do cake. You can see bread and cake. Pretty standard recipes, I think. Uh, but you can also do cereal here. This is, again, one of those hybrids, similar to the old water mill, where they combined flour and oils. This one is combining the bakery and the cereal factory. So, again, really cool. Just, it just, I think, works. You know, to me, it just works. I like it. Now we're going to come down this little lane, take in the rest of the cell points that are in this area here. Come around the corner, through the gate. We're going to start in the back. Now if we come to this back side here, off to our left, we have the Lower Cross Dairy, you can purchase it for $50,000, and this is where you're going to be able to make your butter and cheese from your milk. And then behind us is the Raisin Factory, great processing unit for $80,000. And just standard, we can do our raisins and grape juice. Come back out here. This is the Sugar Shack, another production point for $80,000. Click on this. This is where we can take our various sugar beets, sugar beet cut, and sugar cane to make sugar. But again, similar to the situation we had at the clothing store at the very beginning, we can't produce cotton or sugar cane when doing seasons. So this kind of seems pointless unless you're not running seasons. So the only thing that would be really relevant if you're running Seasons is the Sugar Beet and Sugar Beet Cut. Uh, oops. Behind us was another vehicle repair point. This is D&G Auto Repairs. And then lastly, on this side, is another production. This is the Lower Cross Sawmill where you can bring your trees and make planks and you can then take the planks and send it up to uh, Mr. Splits. You got your wood cell point there in the corner, the trigger. You can unload it here and here is where you can pick up your wood chips that are created from the production of your planks. Now if we head back to the truck I'm going to take in the last two points of interest and we can start wrapping up this map tour. We might actually make the hour mark. I'm actually pretty happy with that. So there's the truck. I'm going to hop in and come around the corner. 
him out to this little stretch of road. Come through the roundabout and exit on the second, second exit. To our right, we have the gas station. And here we have the county sales. Again, another sale point with multiple sales uh, locations. Got one in the front and one in the back. This here we can do looks like milk. And that is pretty much it. We're going to take one last look at the map and show where we've been. So we came from the large farmhouse, swept around past Mrs. Hollins, down this little roadway where we kind of, where I got confused. And we took in this cell point, British Grains. Then we walked on foot to the Lower Cross Indoor Market. We looked at the Sunrise Bakery. And we came in all the way to the back, looking at the Lower Cross Dairy and the Grape Processing Unit. We checked out, uh, oops, checked out DNG Auto Repairs, the Sugar Shack, as well as the sawmill came out um, most likely on this stretch of road here to this main area here we went through that roundabout and then here to the gas station and to the county stores and that's it I hope that you enjoyed this map tour if you liked it please subscribe leave a thumbs up like it do it Whatever the algorithms need you to do in order to uh, show that you were engaged in the channel. And uh, again, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you all have a lovely day.